Hi, I want to give you a preview of the Balancing Act activity for Torque Sim, and that's from FET. We've used some of their simulations before, um, but we haven't really done anything with Torque, and I think that that's something I want to give just a little bit of background about. So the formula that in the flipping physics head puzzle that I talked about of using is this perpendicular force. That's what that upside down T looks like. It just means perpendicular multiplied by force, or perpendicular force multiplied by distance. The distance is measured from something known as a fulcrum or a pivot point. In the demonstration that I've got in front of us, the fulcrum is right here. It doesn't always have to be in the middle, but that's a pretty typical example, and it's going to be true for the simulation that we use. So the key thing here would be, if we think about something like this, this would be tilting clockwise from your point of view. This would be tilting counterclockwise from your point of view. In a system that is completely balanced and not starting to spin or stopping spinning, we're what, we are in what is called rotational equilibrium, meaning no net torque. If we aren't accelerating in a particular direction, up, down, left, right, back, forth, we have no net force. An object that is completely at rest is in what's known as translational equilibrium, meaning no net force, and also in rotational equilibrium, meaning no net torque. This is a nice little example, much like the balancing act thing that we have. Each one of these is one unit of mass. Now the thing that's nice, although the standard unit of torque is newtons times meters, or newton meters, um, you can think proportionally about these. So these aren't set distances, they're just numbered. They're numbered from the center. So if I put one unit of mass on here at four, and another unit of mass on here at 6, I have 1 times 4 plus 1 times 6. I have a total of 10 units, and you want to think standard units, it would be 10 newton meters of counterclockwise torque. Any combination of 10 units of clockwise torque should balance that out. So I could put one mass here at 10, and it'll balance out. If I have, let's say, 4 units of mass I need to use, I could put three of these at three, gives me nine units of torque and we're close, but we're not quite there. If I put another one at one, that would equal ten units of torque and we're pretty darn close to being balanced out. So that's pretty good. So in the Torque Balancing Act, the other thing you want that it talks about a little bit are um, drawing the forces. So if I had something like this, where I had the fulcrum would be here in the middle, and I think I have 10 units off to the side. It's pretty good. For my drawings. So I could have something like this at six and four. Those should be the same length. If I have three times the amount of force down here, I have something like that, and only one unit here. Now because this is also in translational equilibrium, that means however much force is acting down has to be acting up. Well, where is it acting up? The only place that you can be pushing up is at the fulcrum. That's the only part that's touching this beam here. So if I have, actually those should be shorter. If I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six units of force down, I should have a normal force up of six units of force. So I think the first page actually talks about that at the pivot point, uh, what the normal force is. 
So hopefully this helps you out. Um, if I have an unknown amount of mass, I can see where it balances by putting it different locations with respect to known amounts of mass. So I think you'll be able to figure that out pretty well also. Thanks. Ah.